I was saying earlier, you, you've talked to some people, you want to get some stuff off your chest. Uh, you know, we're here to listen to you. Why are you here? What happened? Tell us what, you know, what happened. Well, very beginning, I asked my mother for permission to die. I'm bored with life. I don't like life. I don't like people. I don't like living, basically. There's really nothing, anything depressing about it. Just as it is. It was a Wednesday on December 27th, 1995 in the Lone Star State when Kimberly Diane Hill gave birth to her second child, her baby boy, Kevin Jaswell Davis. Kevin has an older sister, Desiree Hill, who's about four to five years older than him. Kimberly made motherhood her top priority as she loved her children so much. On that same token though, she still had an adventurous side to her. She enjoyed herself a good concert. She went skydiving from time to time, but you know, during her free time she did enjoy some gardening and for work she was a hospice caregiver nurturing those who were in their last days people who knew Kimberly said she was a proud devoted mother according to her children she was the best mom to have and her son Kevin even vouched for how good of a mom she was to him and how he never wanted for anything so you can imagine how shocked confused and speechless everyone was when the devastating news of Kimberly's murder hit the media now for this part of the story on youtube i will be keeping the description very brief and general i don't want no static with the youtube algorithm so if you'd like to hear the full uncensored details of what happened to kimberly as well as view the entire interrogation of her murder you can head over to my Patreon and become a patron for the uncensored versions of my YouTube uploads. And there's also exclusive Patreon only content over there with more to come. So head on over there and subscribe. Okay, now let's talk about what happened to Kimberly. On Thursday evening, March 27th, 2014, a day before Kimberly's 51st birthday, her 18 year old son, Kevin, had approached his mother and told her that he didn't want to live anymore he told her he no longer had the desire to be here on this earth amongst us and he wanted to kill himself he told her he was bored with life he didn't like the idea of living and he didn't like people his mother obviously devastated hearing this told her son she didn't think that he needed to take things as far as but if it was something he truly wanted to do, he was legally grown so she couldn't stop him. So Kevin went on to write a suicide letter as a final goodbye. But what Kimberly didn't know was that the little silver lining of basically telling him, hey, I don't want you to do this. This will break me if you do this, but go ahead if that's what you want to do, had unleashed an 18 year lifetime of violent, gory fantasies that Kevin had been keeping bottled up inside. A few hours after the conversation with his mother of wanting to kill himself, Kevin turned his attention on to his mother instead. He picked up a cord of some kind that he found in the house and he approached his mother Kimberly with the cord while she was distracted sitting on the couch watching TV and he wrapped it around her neck pulling tight until she passed out. Kimberly trying to play possum in hopes of her son you know leaving her alone still didn't stand a chance because because Kevin wasn't done. He grabbed a knife and he stabbed her in her head. Kimberly started to scream, which was clearly going to be a problem for Kevin. So he then took a hammer and bludgeoned his mother in the head with the hammer at least 20 times. Once he saw his mother was deceased on the floor, he then dragged her into the bedroom of their Corpus Christi, Texas home in the Windrush Apartments in the 4300 block of Costores Road. And he lost his virginity to his mother's body post-mortem. 
Kevin had intercourse with his mother's deceased lifeless body. After Kevin was done, he went to clean himself off and then he wrote a note for his sister to find whenever she would have gotten to the house. At the time all this was happening, his sister was at work. Realizing what he'd done, Kevin took a shower, changed his clothes, grabbed his backpack, a bike, and rode to another town called Robstown. He rode around until the morning where he pretty much gave up, tossed his bike near the train tracks, and walked to a nearby home where he knocked on the door and asked the people who lived there if he could use their phone because he needed help since he had just killed someone. He called the sheriff and told them what he did. Deputies picked him up and at the sheriff's office they called police in Corpus Christi to go do a welfare check on Kimberly. They went to the house and they found her undressed from the waist down at the horrific scene in her home at approximately 10 a.m. Now I told you earlier how Kevin had been having fantasies about suicide. Well apparently he also was having fantasies about murder. You see, on the other side of the same page of his suicide note, Kevin had wrote out a plan to murder both his mother and his sister, but his sister wasn't home. Kevin sat with the police and confessed everything to them. He told them this wasn't the first time he expressed to his mother that he wanted to kill himself. So when he wrote the suicide letter and she saw the front and the back of the letter she became heated and she told him like you know what I've had enough of your antics I'm sending you to go live with your sister you can't stay here no more talking like this and so this had set Kevin off and that's when he went into his vile disturbing murder rampage. Police had discovered another letter from Kevin at his house telling police to quote unquote chase him. When police asked him why he wrote the letter asking them to chase him, he said he was in a playful mood and wanted to go on the run for a little while. When police asked him why he did what he did, he said he just wanted to. They asked him had his mother upset him that day? Did she say anything to offend him and set him off? He said no. He was just a terrible and disgusting person and that Kimberly was the best mom to ever have. He said it in the most matter of fact way and said he'd do it again if he had the chance. He also told police that he wanted to kill his sister but he changed his mind because he felt like it would have been a bit too much. But he was absolutely open to killing again. He said he's always fantasized about having sex with a corpse because to him it's just a body, a piece of meat. They asked Kevin if he felt he was mentally ill. Kevin said no, he was perfectly sane and both prosecutors and medical experts experts also agreed that he was perfectly sane. He said he believed he should be punished to the highest extent of the law. When asked if he felt like he could kill again, he said yes. And he was immediately detained after his confession. On Tuesday, October 7th, 2014, a trial was held. And during the trial, Davis could be seen smiling, casually cracking his knuckles and stretching. At one point, he even waved at the witnesses when they were asked to identify him. And on Wednesday, October 8th, 2014, the jury was in deliberation for less than an hour when they found Kevin Davis guilty of murder. As he was being sent off, his sister Desiree said, quote, you took the only person who had your back. Now you're all alone, end quote. And through tears, his grandfather, Clyde Hill, said, quote, I don't quite know what to say to you. You killed your mother. You just don't do that, end quote. Kevin's attorney said Kevin was offered a 60-year prison term that may have allowed him to get out at some point, but Kevin rejected it. He instead was given a life sentence. In June 2015, Kevin had put in an appeal, but he put the appeal in too late. In the state of Texas, an appeal should be entered no more than 90 days after the sentence has been imposed or suspended. Kevin filed almost seven months after the deadline. As of today, Kevin's incarcerated at the just third of fourth facility in Richmond, Texas. According to his prison records, he would be eligible for parole in March of 2044. Um, I don't really even know what to say or think. Uh, evil, pure evil is what this was. I just feel like I, I always wondered if people like Kevin were born evil like that or is this something that they developed to commit such satanic acts like that is underworldly i just can't even imagine what went through kimberly's mind as the first hammer blow came crashing onto her head by her very own son she laid there trying to play possum to possibly save her own life but instead he came back to where she was to finish the job her only son that even by his own admission was very well taken care of by his mom how does one think to not 
not only hurt their mother, but to then have intercourse with her lifeless body and some more things that can't be discussed here. My heart breaks for Desiree. I know she never would have even imagined she'd lose her mom in such a way. And I don't know if she'll ever find it in her to forgive her little brother. But if she does, that just speaks to her unbreakable spirit. May Kevin meet the karma that he deserves. Kimberly's service was held at the Memory Gardens Funeral Home and Cemetery on April 11, 2014. At this point, she's been gone for nine years now. May Kimberly Diane Hill rest in heavenly peace.